Hi, everyone. It's Dr. Paul from the Eastern Ontario Health Unit again with another COVID update for today, June 29th, 2022. I'm going to start by uh, sharing some uh, local data here. Um, uh, right now, we're at two hospitalizations, one in the ICU. Uh, and unfortunately, we had we added two deaths since the last time I gave an update in elderly individuals with chronic medical conditions. And again, this just shows you that COVID is still around and can still cause severe disease and even death. And I'm very sorry to hear about those two deaths, although the death rate is lower, but again, just to show us that it's still there and we need to uh, take the precautions when necessary, particularly among vulnerable individuals. And in terms of uh, our other uh, trajectories, I'm going to look at the percent positivity. And uh, we can see here that we are going on a downward trend bit of a sort of a flattening here, but we're down to about 3.7%. The province is actually a bit of on, the, on an increase. If you if you look at the province wide, which I'll show you a bit later. Um, if we're looking at our uh, overall hospitalizations, again, those are down. These are cases that were positive, not necessarily admitted to hospital for COVID, but were positive. So that's going on a downward trend. And then we're also seeing again, sort of a zero to two to three cases every couple of days. You could see here, we're now at two uh, with one in the ICU. So, you know, this is what we're going to be expecting to see on and off and on and off as we move forward. Our outbreaks, our institutional outbreaks are now starting to decrease again. You can see we were, went up a bit. Now we're going in a downward trend. We're at five. So again, you can kind of see sort of the waves and we are, like I said, we are going to be getting these what I call wavelets, little ripples that are going to be going up and down uh, without, uh, you know, really peaking like we had, uh, you know, in April and in January uh, with the first Omicron wave. So um, uh, when we uh, look at our other uh, monitoring uh, data, uh, we could see uh, this is the Hawkesbury, uh, the uh, water uh, levels, the wastewater levels are flat uh, in uh, Hawkesbury, similar to Cornwall, and down again in Castleman. So again, that is uh, that is good news. Um, in terms of um, uh, some other data, I'm just going to uh, go over uh, the vaccines uh, that are, have been administered. And again, we're kind of, you know, stuck at uh, lower levels of third dose, uh, particularly among the younger population here. Uh, we would need to go to the third dose. Uh, you can see the fourth dose now, we're almost at 60% of 80 plus, and, uh, and, but it still have a ways to go for 60 plus to be able to reach, you know, high levels of fourth dose. And so it's, it's quite important for us to, to talk about the third dose and, and look at, um, uh, you know, what the protection is. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to let you know as well that, you know, we've had questions by, from people about why can't uh, an individual less than 60 get a fourth dose? Um, a couple of reasons uh, that uh, Ontario selected chose to do that is we are expecting um, an announcement uh, about new uh, uh, boosters that would have Omicron in it. Uh, and so that's one of the reasons that we're sort of holding off uh, and so that will might change. As a matter of fact, uh, we're expecting an announcement, I think today or tomorrow, by the National Advisory Committee of Immunization of Canada on what the boosters should be and so on as we move forward. So stay tuned. That's something that we had anticipated. And, um, and we know that both Moderna and Pfizer now have vaccines that contain the Omicron, which are effective against uh, the Omicron and also effective against the B4 and B5 variants, which I'll talk to you a bit later. So it's quite important for us, uh, again, to to ensure that uh, we just keep an eye on our vaccination status. And, you know, moving forward, we're not going to consider people fully vaccinated because the boosters change, the recommendations change. And, yeah, and so we will be considering people up to date, depending on their own circumstances, age, and so on. So for example, today, uh, a 60 plus individual will be considered up to date if they've had four doses. A uh, individual less than 60 years of age would be considered up to date if they've had three doses. So that's the type of thing that we're going to be doing moving forward. I'm now going to uh, uh, share, I want to share my screen and uh, uh, talk about, uh, I'm just going to uh, go to my next uh, statistics here. I want to show a PowerPoint presentation that uh, I do weekly, which has the, uh, the scorecard. And so uh, when we're uh, looking at the scorecard, again, this is on a provincial basis, and here we are. So if we're going to look at our metrics and targets, you can see that for cases, deaths, uh, uh, outbreak numbers, uh, and ICU numbers, all the trends are downwards. Uh, slight increase in hospitalizations, 
um, from week to week and an increase in positivity um, uh, uh, over the last couple of weeks uh, in terms of uh, the seven day average. And so, again, we're going to keep an eye on that. Uh, we're going to make sure we're going to look at, you know, what the other parameters are uh, as, as we move forward to that. Uh, and uh, the other thing that I wanted to show you as well is sort of the, 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 the um, kind of uh, uh, sequencing the gene. So you can see this is Omicron here. And uh, this purple one was the initial BA12, which is the initial Omicron version. Uh, but then you have this light blue here, which is the BA5 variant and the B4 variant. Both of, the, both of these are a bit more infectious than, um, than the original Omicron version. Uh, but we do know that the vaccines do protect against severe disease, both against BA4 and B5. And we do know that the new versions of, of the vaccination uh, that is going to be released likely in the fall that will have Omicron will also be highly effective, not only against Omicron infection itself, but also against the B4 and B5 variants. So that's why it's important for us to keep an eye on what's out there. And that's why we're waiting and, and trying to see what best vaccine we'll be able to put forward to be able to uh, optimally uh, or most effectively protect against uh, those uh, those illnesses and then finally just what I what I want to do as well is I want to share the Ontario dashboard numbers in terms of the the wastewater um, and if we look at the wastewater across the province uh, we could see that um, there was a bit of an increase and again you could see it's not Look at the, the waves that we've had. That's a very sharp increase that we had in, in, uh, in the previous wave and the one in January, very sharp increases. But we had a sort of an increase here, a bit of a bump, and, and you could see a kind of leveling off over here. Uh, and so that's what we're seeing now. Uh, when we see a bit of an increase, that's when we see hospitalizations increase a week or two later. And that's what we're kind of seeing now. Uh, but the ICU cases are not up. And something, and again, I, I do anticipate that they're just going to go back down again in terms of those numbers. And if you were looking at sort of the provincial, uh, uh, sort of regional one, you see Eastern here, which includes uh, us all the way to Belleville, um, you could see that, you know, it was an increase and boom, it's kind of flattening off here. GTA is increasing with kind of going to level leveling off. And the other areas like Central West and Southwest and North. Uh, uh, are again, uh, you could see kind of they're all leveling off as well. So that is um, that is where we're, we are with that. Um, and just a, a few other uh, uh, things that I want to share with you as well is that um, when we're looking at cases uh, between vaccinated and unvaccinated, and again, uh, this speaks to um, uh, the rates of cases, and you could see uh, this is uh, cases. Uh, the second one is hospitalizations, and the third uh, graph here is patients in the ICU. Uh, and you could see that um, unvaccinated are higher rates of getting uh, getting the infection, uh, but they're much higher rates as compared to vaccinated or so unvaccinated versus vaccinated in terms of. Uh, this is almost a you know four or five fold increase uh, of hospitalization, and you could see the same uh, in terms of a three or four fold increase in ICU admission. So again, the vaccines do work in preventing severe disease, uh, and I'm hoping that with the new advent of the um, Omicron version, uh, the vaccines will also be able to protect at a very high level. Uh, just getting the infection itself spread. And that's what we were aiming for uh, initially with the vaccines because it worked with the previous version, but now with the Omicron was resistant. So now if we have this new uh, vaccine as a booster, we'll be able to not only prevent severe disease um, uh, and, and continue to prevent severe disease and hospitalizations, but we're also going to be able to prevent people from getting it. Uh, if they're in contact. And that's what we want to do. Well, and if you achieve that, then you'll be able to really blunt blunt it and, you know, start looking at the uh, road to indemnity and, and uh, you know, um, finishing off of the pandemic. But that's, that's really the theory behind it. So, um, so overall, uh, again, we're, we're looking at uh, just um, continuing what we're doing, uh, we're uh, waiting for uh, statements, like I said, um, from the from NACI in terms of fourth dose and booster dosages and what would be required, what would be in the vaccine that we will be able to offer. We're also awaiting uh, the children's version, the six months to five years of age, less than five years of age vaccinations. That should be approved over the next couple of weeks. So we'll, we'll, we're preparing for that already. And again, usual summer things. Uh, summer is nice now. Uh, people can go, go outdoors, enjoy. 
enjoy. Um, wear your masks if you're indoor and you can't physically distance uh, or if you're vulnerable and so on. Um, but I think, like I said, we're going to be, um, you know, having a relatively more normal summer hopefully, and, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see, we'll prepare for, for the fall. So uh, once again, thank you, and I'll talk to you next week.